Hey, Resound Church, my name is Melissa. I am one of the local pastors here at Resound Church, Orange County, but we do have campuses globally. So if you are in Sydney, Australia, Park City, Netherlands, Denver, Colorado, Portland, Oregon, or here in good old California, send me a message, melissa at resoundchurch.com, and I'll make sure to get you plugged in so that you're up to date on all the latest local news, as well as globally. Coming up next, we have an amazing word, and we believe you're going to be blessed. We cannot wait for you to hear it.
by that worship, I know it's something my soul needed. I wanted to take this brief moment and step into this time of generosity before we hear the word of God. Something I've been meditating on is this verse in Hebrews 13, 16, where it says, and don't forget, do good, share with others, for such sacrifices God is pleased. Something that stands out to me in that verse is when we begin to live this life of generosity, where we step out of ourselves and start living for others, we see the world how God created it to be. We see that person that needs faith, hope, and love. If you want to give today, you can give by text, by mail, or on our church website. The links are in the chat. Let's give as we step into this Word of God. Hey, Resound Church family. Thank you so much for joining us online today. I am so happy that you made the choice to tune in and uh, to be part of our online celebration today. Wherever it is that you're watching us from, anywhere in the world that you might be, I hope that today you have felt encouraged by worship. And now we're going to be getting into a moment of hearing the Word of God. And I am so excited to speak to you today about a problem. And it is a problem called praise. Uh, check out what Acts chapter 16 says in verse 25. It says, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were uh, shaken. Now, if you live in California, you might know what that feels like with those crazy earthquakes that we get once in a while. Um, I'm guessing that it was a lot more violent than that. And it keeps saying this, at once, all the, prisoner, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. And the jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, 
don't harm yourself. We're all here. And the jailer called for lights and rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And I love this story because here we see a couple of guys named Paul and Silas and these guys were going around, they were, they were preaching the word of God, and uh, they were, you know, kind of expanding the, the, the name of Jesus uh, everywhere that they went. Uh, they were establishing the church in the early days, and we finally see that uh, now they're in prison. And they were probably in prison because they, were, uh, they had been preaching the word of God. And uh, it's likely that they were either going to die in jail, or maybe they were going to be executed. And as we see these guys... Uh, in a really tough situation. They're chained up in prison. You know, uh, it's dark. Uh, those prison conditions probably were really, really gross and nasty. And in this moment, they're probably feeling, uh, it, it could be natural to feel discouraged in this moment, but in this story, I love that we see here in uh, verse 25 um, that they uh, begin to praise and to sing hymns to God in the middle of this crazy situation. And then the Bible says that all of a sudden we see that their chains are broken and that the doors fly open and they are free and they're, they're free out of this prison. And even in that moment, uh, the, the jailer uh, gets scared. He's like, oh, my God, all the jailers, just, uh, all the prisoners just escaped and uh, he's about to kill himself. And Paul stops him. He says, no, man, we're all here. And he prevents him from killing himself. And instead he says, what do I need to do to be saved? And through that moment, we see that even the jailer uh, was saved and somebody came to Christ. And I love this story because praise, it can be a problem. It can be a problem to your disease. It can be a problem uh, for your situation. It can be a problem uh, maybe to the things that you're dealing with. And when you begin to praise God in the middle of your circumstances, uh, we see that powerful things begin to happen. There is a problem to your problem, and it's called praise. And this is an amazing story that we can see in the Bible where these two guys are in probably the darkest moment of their lives, and yet they choose to praise God through it. Man, I want to encourage you today that Yes, that can become a problem to the enemy, to, the, to darkness, uh, to the kingdom of darkness, that when we begin to live out a life of praise, things begin to change and things begin to happen in our lives. This season, uh, you know, of shutdowns and COVID and all this craziness that has been happening all over the world has been pretty tough for some people. So many people I've, he I've heard that have lost their jobs. Um, I was just recently talking to a young lady that uh, moved from Atlanta back to California, and she was just telling me that her entire career, uh, career uh, fell apart because uh, the industry that she works in is basically obsolete now. and She's uh, kind of found herself in a moment where she has to rebuild her life again. I've heard of uh, other people who have experienced great loss. They've lost jobs, lost family. Um, just even a few weeks ago, uh, I lost uh, some family. An uncle of mine passed away to COVID, and it has become such a real situation for so many people. Um, there's been loss, there's been death, uh, suicide rates are through the roof. The presidential elections have caused such a divide in this country like we've never seen before. And it seems like there's so much darkness and so many problems and so much sickness and so many situations uh, in this time that we are living. And sometimes we think that we need to go out and find the solution to our problem. Man, I got to go find a doctor or I, I got to go find a lawyer or I got to go uh, find somebody that will give me some answers. I got to find some help for the situation that I'm in. But today I'm here to encourage you that we need to realize as a church that there is power in praise. There is power when we begin to praise God in the middle of our hardships. And he can break any chain in our lives. That's so powerful. That when we are in the middle of a sticky situation, that we're in the middle of maybe some darkness in our lives or a situation or a challenge that we're going through, that when we learn to praise through that moment the way Paul and Silas did, we can see the chains break off and we can see victory in Jesus' name. Have you ever uh, been hit by something unexpected before? Maybe you received some bad news. 
maybe uh, somebody gave you some bad news at work or maybe you went to the doctor and you received some bad news or maybe somebody died in your family or um, maybe something horrible happened in your life. Uh, maybe something terrible is going on in your relationship, and it was so unexpected. Has that ever happened to you before? The way we react to some news can totally change the circumstance. This reminds me of a of a time in my life, personally, in the in the, in, the, in a time in uh, my family's life. I was a lot younger. I was a teenager, and I remember a moment where. Um, my sister, she started to feel uh, sick. She started to feel a little change in her body. And I remember that she, she came home one day and she was having a conversation with my parents in the kitchen. And I could hear them vaguely from the other room. And um, I remember that my sister was just telling my parents, I think I need to go to a doctor because I feel a lump in my breast. And uh, I didn't really know what that meant. I, I, uh, I was just like, oh, that's that's odd, you know. I just remember kind of just thinking that, and um, I remember she goes to the doctor and uh, she comes back, uh, and you know, a few days later, the results of the test that she had done came back, and and uh, I can I can just remember the tears coming down my sister's face as as uh, she told our family that she was diagnosed with breast cancer, and uh, and it was aggressive. And in that time, she was one of the youngest women in America to be diagnosed with breast cancer. She was only 22 years old. So you can imagine a 22-year-old, you know, finishing up her last year of college and, and then now being hit with some crazy news that she has breast cancer. Man, can I tell you, that news was just so unexpected for our family. It was such a shock. It was such a huge blow to us because we had never dealt with anything like that together as a family, and I can imagine for my sister how hard that might have been, the fear of just dying because of an aggressive cancer, a tumor that was growing inside of her breast. And I remember that uh, as the days went by, she would go back to the doctor and she'd come back and they're like, it's very aggressive. And the tumor started to grow and it started to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually it was the size of a tennis ball. And it started as the size of a bean when she first felt it and now is the size of a tennis ball. And and you can imagine the amount of fear and the amount of discouragement that began to creep in. Um, I remember in that time, uh, my family, we owned a, a family business. Uh, we, had a, we had a small restaurant there in the town that I grew up. And uh, we we're about that second, third year where, I mean, it just really started to thrive. And, and our business really started to pick up. And we were becoming kind of like that go-to spot in the community. And... Um, and it was just like this awesome moment in our, in our family where we're just kind of like seeing this, this cool thing happen. And then this unexpected news came and interrupted. And um, I just remember it just became so heavy that my father was just, he decided to sell the restaurant. He's like, I have to let this go because there's so much on our plate. There's, there's so much still happening and I can't focus on all these things at, at the same time. And then after that, um, the days and the months kept passing, and and uh, and then depression kept in and it crept in, and I remember my, just how depressed my mom and my dad were, and again that fear it was just still there, and the cancer kept growing and it kept getting worse, and my sister uh, had to do chemo and her hair fell out and and now she you know she had shaved her head she was bald and. You know, she, she felt embarrassed about that as well. And I remember the moment, there was a turning point in that moment in our lives where my, my mom gathered us as a family. She said, you know what? There's too much fear. There's too much discouragement. We're allowing depression to creep into our family. And we need to, we need to change the narrative of what's happening. And she said, I, I think that we need to begin to praise God in the middle of this. And she began to encourage us, let's praise God. And we started to sing and we started to praise Jesus as, as if there was no more cancer, as if there was no more situation. 
And I remember other fam- family members started joining us and our, our little praise gathering started to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and I remember eventually we started to use the auditorium of our church in that time. We had a small church there in, in that town that I lived in. And, and, and people were just coming and, and it was always the same message. We're going to praise God through this situation. We need to come together and praise God and believe that the answer has already come. Believe that the healing has already come. And I just remember it just, it kept growing and growing. And, and, and I, I, I'm so grateful for those words that my mother just instilled in us that we needed to praise God in the middle of that dark and terrible situation. And it was exciting because eventually, um, you know, she had to have surgery and everybody was just a little bit worried. And, and yet we continued to praise God through it. And they took her into the surgery room. And I recall I was just sitting there with my dad and we were kind of just waiting and praying and praising God through it. We were even singing in the lobby of that hospital. I remember it clear as day. And then after about four hours, the doctors came out and they said, hey, uh, we want to talk to you. Um, we just finished this surgery and we just want to let you know that it was a success. And we were like, oh, awesome. Like, that's great news. And, and he, I remember these words. He, he said, he told my father, when, when we, there's just one, one thing that we just can't figure out. When we cut her open and we removed her breast and, and uh, when we kind of went in there to do the surgery to remove this tumor, we, did not, we didn't find a tumor. All we found were dead cancer cells and healed scars from old cancer. And my, my dad and I just looked at each other and just, I remember the tears falling down our eyes and, and down our face. And we were just so blown away by this incredible miracle that we had just experienced. And we were just like, man, God is so good. This is so powerful. It was such an incredible moment for our family and in that moment that we were, st- we, w- we were still able to find the courage to praise God in the middle of this dark and terrible moment that we were going through. Man, can I tell you something? You, you know what the devil does not expect f- uh, for you to do when you find yourself in the worst situation in your life? The devil doesn't expect for you to praise, to praise God. I came here to tell you today that whatever the situation is that you find yourself in, whatever problem you may be facing, whatever attack may be coming your way, if you just respond to God in praise, your situation might change. The circumstance in your life might just change. And not just that, but the situation of those around you can change as well. Salvation can even follow when we learn to praise God in the middle of the darkest moments in our life. There is a problem and it is called praise. And it starts with your praise. Praise is a big problem to the devil. When we praise God, the devil begins to get scared, man. Let me tell you. The devil's always going to try to keep your attention on on your problem, on your situation. He's going to try to make you seem like that problem is so much bigger than it is. That your challenge will will feel so much bigger than what it actually is. That the situation or maybe the sickness or the heartache in your life is so much bigger than what it is. But the bigger your situation may look, then the easier it is for your faith to feel small. But I believe that All of this can change when we learn to praise God in the middle of our hardships, in the middle of the darkness, in the middle of the situations, in the middle of the sickness, in the middle of the challenges. Let us praise God through these things as we as we see what he will do in our lives, man. If you praise God, won't he do it? Can you believe that God will do something incredible in your life when you just praise through those moments? I believe that when we make this change in our mind and praise God through these dark and and difficult moments, those challenges, that God will begin to be magnified and that we can begin to see God as something so much bigger than our small problem and our small situation. Because the more we focus on Jesus and the more we focus on God, the smaller the problems will always seem. 
So here's a challenge. Your praise, it has to overcome your preference. And sometimes it is easy to not feel like praising God in those moments. Isn't it? It is tough. It is a hard thing to do to raise our hands and say, God, I want to praise you when you feel down. Or God, I'm going to praise you when you feel sick or when you feel like these challenges are just so big and so difficult to overcome in our lives. And we come to church and maybe we can't even lift our hands. All the more when we realize what God has done for us, our only response should be praise because praise is a problem to our situation. And you know, you know what runs people out to church more than the devil? It's discouragement. Discouragement is such a silent killer. It destroys so many spirits. So many people's morale and so many uh, people's uh, just uh, their ability to believe. But let me encourage you with this, that praise, it protects you from being discouraged from what hasn't even happened. Because sometimes, man, we give up before we see the outcome of the situation. Isn't that so true? Have you ever met somebody that just completely gave up before the situation or the outcome of the situation had even happened? But guess what? The story isn't over in your life. The story hasn't been finished, been written yet because God is powerful. And if we can praise through those moments, God can bring such powerful change in our lives. So praise God through it all. That's my encouragement to you that you will praise God through those moments. When we constantly live in praise, we have no other choice than to put discouragement aside. When we praise God, discouragement has to go. So my encouragement to you is this, that we'll learn to truly live from a place of praise rather than discouragement. Because when we praise, our situation changes. When we praise, the situations of those around us change. And when we praise, people come to Christ. So how can we take this and, and apply it to our life? Oh, I'm glad you asked. First, let's focus our attention on God and not on our situation. Like I said before, when we put our attention on God, the situation feels smaller. So make it a point every day when you wake up, acknowledge how big God is and how small the problem is. Acknowledge how sovereign God is and how small the situation is. Acknowledge that we serve a great and mighty God and that discouragement has to go. Number two, let's praise God in the middle of our darkest moments. When you feel overwhelmed by your situation or by whatever is going on in your life, take a moment right then and there to praise God. Whatever that looks like for you. If you're feeling sad or depressed or anxious, pause. Maybe you need to turn on some worship music and just sing to God and praise. Or maybe you just need to take a moment and stop and, and, and just dance in the middle of your living room or in the middle of your office or wherever it is. You might be in the middle of a storm. Maybe you just need to do a little dance right there. But let us praise God in the middle of our darkest moments. And lastly, let's believe that in the middle of our praise, there is freedom and there are miracles and that there is salvation. So exercise your faith. Make a declaration that God is in control. Speak the things that you are believing for into existence. Speak them as if they already are because there is power in our words. So in that moment when you feel like you can't get through the day, say, I'm going to get through this day. I already got through this day. Change the narrative and begin to speak those things into existence because there is a problem and it is called praise. So let us pray. God, we thank you for this moment. Thank you for every person 
that is here watching this message and listening to these words, God. I pray that uh, your word will just live through us, God, and that we will take on this word and praise you through the middle of our darkest and most challenging moments, God, because I know that through praise and through focus on you, God, there are miracles, that there is salvation, and that many people can come to you, Jesus. So I pray that today, as we carry on this word this week, that when we are faced by those challenges, Lord, that we will just praise you through it all. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope that you were encouraged by that message. I know that we were. So again, if you want to get connected locally, send me a message, melissa at resoundchurch.com, and I'll get you connected locally wherever it is that you're at. Also for prayer, prayer at resoundchurch.com, and our giving link will be posted down below. We hope you have an incredible week. God bless you.